Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrew Stott, I'm the Emperor of Stemeria, and today we're paying another visit to the Kingdom of Wayward. Now, even though it's been about a year since the last tour of the Kingdom of Wayward, uh, I have been here dozens and dozens of times myself, but I wanted to have an update video now that the Kingdom of Wayward has become an associated state within Stemeria uh, as to what they've been doing and what they hope to do in the future. So with that in mind, I'll pass you on to King Raoul Halvar of the Kingdom of Wayward, who will now give us the Grand Tour. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Wayward. I'm Raul Halvar, King of the Kingdom of Wayward, and I'm here today to give you a tour of our territory for all of you Stamarian citizens and subscribers out there that would possibly like to see what's going on up here in the woodlands. So firstly, this is where we're at. This is our entrance way to Wayward, the fairy garden. And the idea of this is, is to plant as many different flowers and a variety of bulbs so every year it comes back with more colour and more food for the pollinators and the bees and the butterflies which will then in turn help us in the next part of the woodland which is our farming district and the farming district is through here and in time this archway will be the gateway to the farming district for now we've only got a few climbers but we do have a lot more in the farming district than we have done in previous years. We have the orchard here and we've got various different trees in here as well as guinea pigs which help to fertilize the ground and keep the grass short. We've got pear trees, peach tree, plum trees, cherry trees, um, apple trees um, all in this vicinity as well as the raspberry bushes. More so than that we've also got the timber yard where we do a lot of the processing of the wood and the stuff that we use for fires burning cooking a lot of our a lot of our resources are um, wood or fire based because that's where we get all our light and fuel from um, this is our main bed this is our main veg bed um, if not the the biggest one that we do have which is a combination of all different manures and soils and it's not looking its best right now at the end of uh, summer but it has given us a good um, a good amount of potatoes and produce this year it's been the best year this year since we've had in a long long time um it's been redesigned a couple of times and it's still not finished yet but eventually in time this will be where we grow the majority of our produce here um in this bed we've got the poly tunnel here but again since spring and summer has now been and gone that is pretty much just empty and not being used for much in fact this time of year not a lot is used in the farming district or utilized because it is coming up to autumn and a lot of that time is spent more with the birds and the rest of the woodland uh, which is through here so this is the farming union this is where everything that happens to do with the farming district is here the composting the flower pots everything like that it all comes through here at some point and we keep that closed because that is the farming union only Eventually, all our pathways will have uh, walkways like this uh, to encourage the growth to go up and over, um, as well as offering us an opportunity to hang lights so that we can actually see where we're going at night. But through here, 
is one of our most uh, self-sufficient aspects of Waywood, which is our poultry. So in this pen here, we've got the Muscovy ducks. These two mums have given birth this year, or at least hatched eggs this year, and they've got two ducklings each, so they co-parent well. So they've been left uh, they've been left to their own devices there to raise those young, um, which will eventually be used for meat or egg um, production. Our main and majority of our eggs, they come from the um, wayward chickens that we have, which are mostly Aracana and leg bar chickens, um, which are the ones that lay the blue eggs. We breed them ourselves, we raise them ourselves, we even eat them ourselves. It's a whole production line when it comes to the chickens and the birds, from the moment they're hatched out from the egg to the moment that they're used as food, and then eventually bone meal for the uh, vegetable patches. It's all part of the self-sufficient stance that we stand at at Wayward. Next to the chicken pen, we've got the children's play area, which is a standard, I think, for any woodland to have a tire swing, um, mainly for my benefit, but the children love it also. So we've given that little bit to the children and um, just leave them to their own devices. Down here, we've got more of our flock, which is the uh, Aracana Bantam. And they're here on the left, again, blue egg layers, just different flock, different roosters. They're here as a, as a separate uh, pen because they're a slightly different breed. Um, these two here are the bantams. The one on the left hand side, that is actually a leg bar, but she doesn't, she doesn't lay blue eggs. So um, we put her in here with Reg. Um, so the, the eggs don't uh, get mixed up in with the other eggs in the main chicken coop because the main chicken coop, we don't want our rooster wasting their time on chickens that don't lay blue eggs. We want the rooster to be concentrating on the chickens that do lay blue eggs. So he gets the dud and he gets the good hens. More so than that, down here, we've got more guinea pigs um, and they tend to uh, move around the place in their pens. Eventually this will all be grass. Once it's grass, the guinea pigs will be the main grass cutters. We've got the two pens here, we've got the golden pheasant pen here, and we've got a silver pheasant pen down here. These are our more exotic birds. Not for food or for eggs, mainly just for my own, my own amusement. And uh, in here is the herb garden pond garden. And this is Gemma. This is my turtle that I've had since I was about 12. Uh, one of the first pets that I've ever had. She now lives in the Wayward Lake. Um, and she's loving life. She's been there now for almost, well, well over a year now. And uh, this is where we grow a lot of our herbs. Mint, lemon balm, oregano. This eventually will be an entire herb garden of all various different things that we can use in cooking, in, in lotions, in all sorts of things that we ourselves are producing. Um, eventually all that mint and lemon balm will spread all down there and basically be another step to self-sufficiency. Down this way we've got the uh, woodland walk, which is basically a, a small little trek around the woodland um, down through here and it comes back out through here. So what we have here is our bee bed, which is where we're hoping to get some beehives and uh, basically cover this entire area with a lot of bee friendly and pollinator friendly flowers. Um, next to our new addition, which is the wildlife pond, which has only just gone in uh, maybe a couple of months ago and uh, has slowly been filling up with rainwater. Getting a couple of plants in there now. We've got the lily, which is fully established in there now. I'm hoping to get some flowers out of that next year. Once the bees are in here, this will be their domain. And they'll be left to their own devices down here, making us honey. And with that honey, it's just another produce. It's another another step to self-sufficiency. Um, and up through this way, all of this on the side here, which is dead space, this is going to be used for more flower beds, um, more growth, and we're basically just going to fill this up with as much different variety as possible. This is the berry bed, and the berry bed is where we grow the majority of our berries. We've got blueberry, we've got raspberry, we've got uh, guji berry, elderberry, hawthorn, uh, black currant, red currant. Um, there's a lot of different berries in here, and because the ground is so acidic, 
they absolutely love the soil so they, they're thriving at the moment um, as you can see this was not like this a few months back this was mainly um, mainly just used as a dead space after the fire pit that was here before came out then the brambles started to take over and it just seemed like an ample opportunity to turn it into a berry bed of course the bees will also pollinate this for us over time and produce more fruit for us thus giving them a food source and more of a food source for us jams preserves various different things like that jams and honey eggs and potatoes uh, one step to self-sufficiency at a time this is uh, another new addition that we've got in which is another trellis which is now part of our more self-sufficient lighting system at wayward which is the solar lights at the top eventually most of the paths if not all the paths will have various different trellises like this with the lights that will light up the pathways as we come through but also more than that the growth can then be used to grow over the top and make use of the space that is above our heads because our stance here at Wayward is to coexist with nature. And this space up here above our heads is just as valuable as the space on the ground. So if we can just use this one little channel, then we can make the most of the growing space above us. As the main entrance to Wayward, as you come through here, although we came in through the back way, through the farm district, this is gonna be a centerpiece. We've got the flags here for Wayward, but we've also got Pride of Place, the Stamarian flag as well, uh, next to each other, as uh, as close as um, the sky as we can get as the flag <laughs> should be um, in a woodland. So as you come through here, this is the main gateway. You walk through the flagpoles, you walk past here. We've got the berry bed here again on this side, but on this side, you've got the strawberries and the strawberries are coming in beautifully now. They're flowering and we've been having strawberries off of these strawberry bushes um, for a while now. Coming back through here, we're also experimenting with different climbers. Uh, the Clementis is one of them. Um, this has been here now for a good couple of weeks. It's flowering, it's still growing, it's still in the pot, but it's still doing extremely well, which fills me with the confidence that eventually we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a range of different flowers and climbers everywhere. Through here we've got our fire station every everywhere that has people needs a fire station because people can't be trusted when there's fire involved so we have the fire station here in preparation for our fire pit which is just around here so the fire pit is uh, adjacent to um, pretty much everything it's the most central point of wayward um, and it's one of the places that we're going to uh, focus mainly on the bushing up of and uh, concealing so that we can have our own windproof area to socialize and just to chill out in here um again very standard very basic that's what wayward is we're very standard we're very basic and this is opposite what i hope to be one day is the um picnic area for various different um functions and events so we want a couple more of these uh picnic benches because i prefer the wooden benches to the plastic ones so i'm gonna get a couple more of those benches this is the fire pit, barbecue, dinner, perfect. All part of that whole self-sufficient stance is burning, cooking, doing everything on a fire. And this is our main hearth, our heart, the centerpiece of Wayward. So yeah, that's Wayward. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, make sure you hit the subscribe button because you never know when there's gonna be another update and when things are gonna change again. And I'm going to see you next time. Love and peace. Well, if you enjoyed that video and you want to play a role in Stumeria's development and expansion, then please consider becoming a Stumerian citizen through our Patreon campaign, which we'll link in the description below. Otherwise, feel free to give the video a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll catch you in the next one.